Gulfstream Park through the years. What a way to get into this Friday afternoon. And believe us, there's plenty of racing to go around for everybody. Good to have you with us. 12 races on this Friday, February 9th here at the old GP by the Sea. Keisha Courtney, Jason Blewett with you on this live edition, Friday edition, that is, of Gulfstream today. And we've got a third race that really is more of a grade one masquerading <laughs> as a high-level allowance. It really does seem that way. You have one liner coming off the layoff who was three for three before the bench, before the bench, excuse me, of course, winning the grade three Southwest. And Mind Your Biscuits, already a multiple grade one winner, making his first start of 2018. So small but potent field, really excited for that one. And that's the marquee attraction on a, on a Friday Beat the Expert program in which Acacia Courtney <laughs> is up. We were talking and she's pretty confident, folks. She said, don't. <laughs> Don't tell them this on the air. She told me a minimum of 10 winners today. So if you Give think you can top few. that, yeah, <laughs> you can top that. Play for free. Sign up over at GulfstreamPark.com. This is my most intimidating face possible. So I don't know if I'm scaring anybody away, but um, I don't want to scare you away. I want you to play because it's a lot of fun and you get to trash talk on Twitter. You have full license today, um, but we love to see you play. It's always free to play. Go to our Facebook page, 12 races today and should be up to date on there. You can get your picks in before first post. Yes, one-stop shopping, all things Gulfstream Park and beyond over at GulfstreamPark.com. Available for free at your fingertips 24-7. Entries, results, press notes, and of course, our Friday free-to-play Beat the Expert. Now, moving ahead into the weekend, we run 12 today, 12 tomorrow, and 12 on Sunday. A couple of big guarantees, though. In mm -hmm. fact, three all together will highlight Saturday's card, and we'll have the second of only three grade ones during the championship meet here tomorrow in the Gulfstream Park Turf Handicap, and that is the star attraction with these big, big mega money guarantees. <laughs> and those are pretty great. Do note that that Rainbow Six guarantee will only be if it's not hit today, so keep an eye on that. It made it through yesterday's yep. card, so keep an eye on it today, but really nice guarantees in the late pick four and the late pick five as well, both 400 uh, $400,000 in those sequences. And as Jason said, the grade one Gulfstream Park Turf will also have the grade three Swanee River, which is a really competitive race too. An excellent field. Mm -hmm. The prep for that race won by Ultra Brad. I believe that was the Ginger Brew over Dream Dancing. They will come back. They will meet once again. Uh, Chad Brown's got Alicia's World in the mix. There's a good Kitten's Joy filly on the outside whose name escapes me. A Kitten something <laughs> who's pretty good for trainer Mike Maker and the Ramses. And she's got the outside post in the Sewanee River. And then as far as the uh, Colt race goes, the Gulfstream Park Turf Handicap, Heart to Heart's in there off a really tough beginning in the Fort Loudy Stakes, mm -hmm. and he'll be taking on a pretty good crew, including a couple of runners like Money Multiplier and a uh, Chilean bred by looking at Lucky for Chad Brown. Yeah, it's a really competitive race, and Kitten's Roar was the one you were thinking of. Really classy coming out of graded stakes competition, but just those those two stakes, some nice maiden races yeah. early oh, on yeah. to a really good card um, with some really good betting opportunities as well. Yes, today's 12 race card with that Mind Your Biscuits race going in the third, a good segue into a big weekend at Gulfstream Park. And a little rundown and reminder, we do some housekeeping at this point in the day, and we do have three-year-old turf runners in a optional claimer kicking things off in the first and the opening high five with no carryover on this sunny fast and firm Friday at Gulfstream Park. A 50 cent early pick five begins in race number one. Not one, not two, but three pick fours today. We do. Don't forget about that ever popular middle pick four starting in race number five and we'll have three days with three pick fours yep. on that 12 race program. So don't forget about that. Always give you another chance to dive right in and get some action. And then we do have Speaking of action, that Rainbow Six, again, keep an eye on it. If it's not hit today for one unique ticket, there will be that $750,000 guarantee tomorrow. But right now, it just keeps growing. $330,000 we're already up to. Feels like the momentum in the Rainbow Six. And again, just as a friendly reminder, we will go full circle at the tail end of the card with the late pick five that gets underway in race number eight. But we have picked up over $110,000 in the Rainbow Six carryover just on Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah. And it feels like, even though we are more than halfway through this championship meet, feels like, and we've had some gigantic Rainbow Six pools, mm -hmm. it feels like that bet, the... Uh, 
the encouragement and uh, the overall uh, flavor and flair with the Rainbow Six, it just keeps picking up momentum, which is a lot of fun as somebody who doesn't play the pick six, even for 20 cents all that often. It is fun to sit on the sidelines and just watch the Rainbow Six fever and fervor here day after day. Well, it's pretty interesting because I kind of came into golf stream. I, I like pick threes, pick fours, and those six races just sometimes can seem so intimidating, but just having the 20 cent base wager, I think really makes it a lot uh, easier to kind of put together a ticket and with the the encouraging fact of trying to get that unique ticket it really is fun and it's fun to see everybody diving in and we certainly appreciate everybody participating in that rainbow six and it'll take a while to get to the opening leg today race number <laughs> seven on this 12 race Stamina. february 9th yes this is not a sprint <laughs> this is definitely a marathon as we get into the first of a dozen and we'll kick things off a little afternoon with the first race on the firm turf for the three-year-old optional claimer runners and who'd you use here in race one in the pick five. I would have liked to use almost everybody in this. <laughs> it's a race. really yep. hard race. Uh, Todd Pletcher certainly got a strong hand with a couple, but I really like Bantu in here. I hope he can pull the minor upset, getting a, a drop in class and second time with the blinkers. Certainly Elk Camp, who was impressive breaking his maiden last time. And amazingly, you got John Velasquez and Todd Pletcher at six to one, but it's a really good race to start things off. Race number two, just going with two horses. I have a first time starter and a drop down runner. And in the third race, welcome back biscuits and welcome hmm. back one liner as well i'm using both of them i'm not going to single either i think they're both really strong horses they've got both got their own fair share of questions sure. as well um, but again a small but really potent field race number four you do have a strong presence with trainer kelly breen who has valedictorian and the stretch out runner my country florida fabulous also second off the layoff is eligible to take a step forward and then i'll just use two horses um, you've got salute with honor coming off of the layoff and cinderella el chrome was a horse we were pretty familiar with uh, last year here at Gulfstream. Been running up in New York, and he's now first off the claim for Danny Gargan. As that horse comes back and has had just under 90 days, mm -hmm. three months or so, between races off the claim for a very potent barn. Has done a great job, obviously, in his limited starters this meet here in South Florida. But again, we begin with those three-year-old optional claimer runners in race number one. Seven and a half furlongs, and we are fast and firm. It's another warm one here in Hammondale Beach, more like a summertime. Uh, summertime temperature. Mm -hmm. The heat index turned up just a little bit today and all those Gotta snowbirds. Get sunscreen out. Yeah, you better put on some sunscreen today and I'm sure all the uh, snowbirds that are in town and we run into plenty of them and that's one of the great things about Gulfstream Park. They are loving the warm temperatures and the sun this time of year in Florida. However, let's talk about the first and that includes the uh, the old one-two punch from Mr. Todd Pletcher in Elk Camp and the uh, two horse Tis Now Times Two and I've got them both in the mix. Mm -hmm. In fact, you and I We'll take Elk Camp and Bantu boxed in the mm -hmm. exacta. I had talked about it a number of times. I just like that field that Elk Camp beat. I do too. He did it from an outside post, mm -hmm. and I do believe that maybe he just has found his niche as a turf force, and I'm hoping that's the case. I think so too. Was, I believe he had been entered in a turf force prior, a turf race prior that was rained off. They finally got him on the grass, stuck with that outside post. As, as we said, you got uh, Pletcher and Velasquez at six to one, which is incredible. But he was impressive to win that, and the race did produce two next out winners. Um, Bantu, though, for me, is going to be the one that I land on. They added the blinkers last time, and it was just against Tougher. In fact, he was beaten by another really impressive Todd Fletcher runner in Murad, who, who looks to be pretty good on oh, the yeah. turf, too. But um, here's a stat on trainer Brendan Walsh in the past five years. The first time for the tag on the turf is this horse is dropping in for the 50,000. Small sample size, but he does really well. So I think this is a, a trainer who's had himself a solid Gulfstream championship meet, kind of a more up-and-coming barn, but I think an excellent horseman. And uh, Jose Ortiz does stay aboard. And Jose riding well, 37 wins and counting at the meet. Luis Saez, is, of course, number one with 84. Both those young riders will be seeing plenty of action throughout the afternoon as we turn the page and get on to race number two. And we head to that fast main track, and there were very few changes and scratches on the program, mm -hmm. which is always a good thing, especially when you're running 12 and there's some big fields. However, race number two did have a couple of defections, and we are down to a field of six in this three-year-old $50,000 maiden claimer on the dirt. And a couple of horses are dropping out of a race, mainly the number six Zigzillion for Ian Wilkes and the number seven horse Dino. 309. <laughs> Love the name here with this cult by alternation. They are coming out of that Magna Moon yeah. race. And I think if you were on the fence or wanted to see maybe a, another performance or two 
off that race. We got it, and maybe it surprised even some of us who thought that had the potential to be a live race when Machismo came out and just drilled the field with a fast fig here last weekend. He was really impressive, and still to this day, I think Magnum Moon is one of the um, most impressive maiden runners we have seen yeah. here at Gulfstream for Todd Fletcher this year. So really excited about where he's heading mm -hmm. next. I think that was a really strong field as well. Dino 309 it does pick up Luis Saez. We both landed on the same horse. He seems to be working well since. Angel Red Rodriguez, special weight to claiming, as simple as that. He does a very good job with it. I use a first-time starter and second, the two Travi boy. Um, Dave Fox in first-time starters made in claiming. That's kind of his, his strong game, and the barn has been going well. Um, and this one's half to a couple of stakes winners as well by Jamologist. So there is some pedigree there to work with. All right, sounds good. We'll see how that one does. Facing off against the two outside runners from that solid Magna Moon race. Mm -hmm. As we move on to race number three, the main event on this uh, Friday, February 9th here at Gulfstream Park. It is a high-priced allowance optional claimer here at seven furlongs on the dirt. And we say it a little bit of tongue-in-cheekly, but this is a legit grade two type oh, stake yeah. due to the presence of one liner and Mind Your Biscuits. And you might argue they're both certainly Mind Your Biscuits, a grade one winner and a grade one level talent. Mm -hmm. Now, let's get you back to the biggest win of Mind Your Biscuits career. And that happened late March of 2017. Some few thousand miles from where we're <laughs> sitting right now at Maidan Racecourse over in Dubai. This is him in the $2 million Golden Shaheen and trainer Chad Summers has been on the record saying the Gulfstream Park sprint a bit later in the meet followed by title defense in the 2018 Golden Shaheen are the two major early season goals for this New York bred who is just a powerhouse and further proofication that a good horse can come from anywhere. Yeah, Chad called him the little New York bred who could, mm -hmm. which I really did like. And he said, this year coming back, I, I went to Palm Meadows the other day to speak to Chad Summers about this horse. And uh, you can check out our Gulfstream Park YouTube channel for that feature and that video and hear from Chad. But he said this year is all about unfinished business. So he wants to come back, defend his title, even looking uh, towards the Met Mile a little bit further down sure. the road. And they're even considering next year's Pegasus World Cup to try to stretch this horse out. So they've got big goals for the next coming year. But uh, Chad saying he's really developed and grown into himself now as a five-year-old. But bigger fish to fry. Absolutely. And he does like to uh, close from out of it, to say the least. We got a, a little taste of that in the uh, Gulfstream Park sprint at six and a half furlongs mm -hmm. last February, late February, when he was beaten by the very enigmatic at the time, Unified. So mind your biscuits, prepping for, for bigger spots down the road, whereas one liner, certainly he's back and they want to get mm -hmm. a race into him, of course. But I, I think there's a, a bit of a, a, a difference in what's at stake today, where sure. one liner... They're probably, again, looking ahead, but this is more of a, a winning big effort type return uh, with trainer Todd Pletcher, Windstar, and Johnny V. And we'll backtrack to one liner who, again, I and Acacia had mentioned, we both kind of forgot about this mm -hmm. horse. He ran so long ago, and this is two back for him uh, just about a year ago, a little more than a year ago on uh, on January 26th of 2017 when he made it a perfect two for two at the time, and he would go on from an outside post to boot, shipping into Oaklawn Park. He'd make it a perfect three for three in his career. We'll see how he does coming back, and he might be a little more. In fact, I'd be surprised, really surprised, if he wasn't way more forwardly placed in this compact field when compared to his arch rival or key rival in Mind Your Biscuits. And Todd Pletcher, as we show you a little little stat, his layoff horses this meet at Gulfstream alone have not mm. needed a race to come back. They've been fired up and just running gigantic off the bench. And that's certainly a, it's a great stat to show. And it's absolutely true. Todd's horses have run spectacularly. And it's interesting, just looking at that race but from last year, last January, the third place finisher salute with honor. We'll see in race number five also coming off of a layoff. So a few horses coming back. What I don't like about this horse is the turn back in distance. And it, it always kind of, when a horse comes off a layoff and they're turning back and um, it kind of looks to me like maybe he might need a race uh -huh. and, and we'll see. And I'm really curious to see what we're going to get from both of these horses. And there's absolutely the class there with one liner and he's undefeated. So anything can happen in this race, but um, would be fun to, to watch Biscuits come back 
can get a win. Absolutely. I mean, if you're a fan of the game, he is oh, very yeah, much a sure. Gunavera type horse. <laughs> he is a real people's horse, yeah. salt of the earth, blue collar every step of the way, and uh, a great story. And it's obviously not finished with him yet. Good to have him back as a five year old. As we turn the page, we get on to race number four. Now, normally, a nice two other than for Phillies and Mares, older Phillies and Mares would take the spotlight. Today, it's not the, uh, <laughs> not the case or the situation with the uh, third race grabbing the headlines, but make no mistake, this is a pretty good field. And although Kelly Breen has strength in numbers with valedictorian mm -hmm. on the rail and uh, towards the outside, the number five, my country, I'm going to give one more chance and maybe foolishly, I yeah. admit that, but I'm going to give the number six Florida Fabulous one more chance. And of course, this is a crossroad pivotal race if there ever was one mm -hmm. for a filly who's only run five times. I just don't see her running back 43 days after a complete disaster if the connections didn't feel that she was back to her old self and we'd get the quote unquote good Florida Fabulous who was pretty good last winter. She really was. She was impressive in her first couple and then went right into graded stakes competition. I really think that she needed that race last time out so she absolutely could take a step forward today. We mentioned Kelly Breen as the strength in numbers and my country stretch out in distance um, kind of concerned me a little bit with that stretch out. I thought valedictorian who does have um, some some dirt ability, certainly three for five on the dirt. I know that she's been running on the turf recently, but um, her last big win was going two turns at uh, Parks and one by seven that day. So I think that she's able to handle the surface switch and I'll, I gave a stab with her. All right, sounds good. We'll see how Breen does against Florida Fabulous, who's trying to recapture some of that old promise in race number four. Fifth on the afternoon as we stay on the main we'll cut back to three quarters with this Florida bred older a other than allowance optional claimer we go with a field of seven and on the outside is that number seven salute with <laughs> honor just funny how the ebb and mm -hmm. flow of the game that both horses wound up on the same card with one liner who hasn't been out in about a year and they basically are running in the same pick five today <laughs> but um, as far as the most interesting last out replay it concerns a horse on the rail named Sweat, and I don't think a Sweat sandwich ever sounds good, and it certainly <laughs> did not look good or comfortable in his last start as we pick up the head on uh, back on July 16th. They will break, and this horse in the green and white of Arendelle, just boom, there's that Sweat sta sandwich. He was completely cut off just uh, completely shut off in between <laughs> rivals and totally out of the race. And you wonder, considering that effort, image. huh? I said that's a horrible image. Yeah, and it looked like it, a horrible image, <laughs> horrible taste to think about, and it was just as bad, if not it worse, was. in the replay it we was. showed you. And you almost wonder, even though we rallied to finish a well-beaten third, if maybe something happened, he had a little issue mm. in that race because it did precede a 208-day uh, layoff, and he's back from the inside post. He is back. He's going to turn back to sprinting where he did win at first asking in, uh, in state bred special weight competition. So certainly if he comes off the off of uh, the bench and actually gets a clean break <laughs> this time and not sandwiched, but we both landed on Cinderella El Chrome and um, remembering this horse uh, about a year and a half ago when he was running down here in South Florida, he is the type of horse that would get really keyed up and really nervous in the afternoons before the races. And if he was good on the track, he could be very good, but he was uh, again, just a little bit hard to handle. So obviously he's been up in New York I haven't seen him in the flesh or seen him act beforehand, so I'm really curious what we're going to get. But Danny Gargan's horses have been running. Yes, and not to disparage anybody else, but when you're claiming off a low percentage or under the radar type barn, and then you've got almost three months between the date mm -hmm. you were claimed and you're coming back for a trainer who can just do little wrong and is so good off the claim, I think we are going to get mm -hmm. a big, big, gigantic type run out of Cinderella El Chrome. And for you, reunited, and it reunited. feels so good. I'm really excited. <laughs> to hear what you have to say about Cinderella El Chrome, who's got Erod Ortiz, who's right behind his brother in the standings with 34 victories. Let's move on to race six. Not quite time for the opening leg of Friday's <laughs> Rainbow Six, but we're almost there. We're back on the turf, and we'll stretch things out at a mile and three sixteenths in this older maiden special weight, where really, as far as the grudge match on today's <laughs> card, a recent type grudge match, this race takes the cake, and I think top billing, due to the presence and the fact that you have five 
five horses that ran against each other back in the seventh here at GP on New Year's Eve. We'll go back, we'll use our little spotlight time machine, and we'll show you <laughs> that race. And uh, playing hooky on the rail in the uh, in the yarn silks of uh, Richard Santulli, mm -hmm. the dark blue out there is uh, Uncle Gio, who will wind up losing by just a head. And we'll roll the tape from there, and both of these horses ran okay. Although I thought playing hooky would win at 8-5. to five. He did not want to give up any significant ground. And let's just freeze it there. So you got playing hooky down on the rail. Here is Uncle Gio with Johnny V. Uh, Chad's horse, Frontier Market, is in the Claravich silks. And the white cap right down here is Sport, who I thought had a very good trip and ride off the layoff. So all these horses within, say, three or four lengths of each other turning for home, and in the end, we'll roll it, and playing hooky will finish a game second, mm -hmm. or a game third, rather, and Uncle Gio, boy, did he lose a tough one here. It was really a tough beat, and Arch Daddy was, was really impressive to win that race. You can see him moving on the outside, and even at this point, Uncle Gio looking a little bit like he's wanting to stop, and John Velasquez was such a great ride to get that last little bit out of him. Certainly, all these horses flattered when Arch Daddy came back to win again with a 92 buyer speed figure. You and I both preferring playing hooky out of that race. I think he's got some natural early speed. Um, I'm glad that they get a little bit of a rematch in here, and it's a really nice race. And I, I do like even Frontier Market coming out of that, too. I think that all three of these horses Definitely. are not without a shot. And Sport, keep in mind, he mm -hmm. hadn't run in a year and five days. Yeah. So maybe he can take a step forward because he was cut out at one time to be an okay little turf horse for mm -hmm. trainer Jimmy Bond. So with the opening six down, we've got, well, six more to bring you. It's all about the rainbow after this quick timeout. At Express Bet, we celebrate the champions that make horse racing great. That's why we provide more ways to bet from more places than ever. We've built an entire family of brands to give players more of the rewards they deserve, give bettors the information they need to win, and provide a community for horse bettors. Because the best way to support the champions of horse racing is to champion horse racing. Express Bet, we are racing. Pennsylvania, proud of our growing breeding and racing industry. Tens of thousands of jobs with a massive economic impact. Now, North America's most lucrative awards program will pay a 50% breeder award for PA sired PA bred maidens who run first, second, or third, with 25% for non PA sired PA breds, plus up to 40% in owner bonuses, 400 plus restricted races, and our program has paid out $30 million for the sixth straight year. Breeding and racing in Pennsylvania, it's a winner. Trying to come up with some winners. If you're just joining us on this live Friday edition of Gulfstream Today, it's a Beat the Expert Friday. Miss Acacia Courtney is up. Play for free. Take her on over at GulfstreamPark.com. And again, as we said at the top, a lot of racing to go around with three consecutive 12 race cards and what are we doing in the rainbow? All right, well, we've got to pad that bank roll. <laughs> yes, Jason and I were just talking about this. This is not oh, an easy sequence. So tough. Now, we do have 330,000 in that carryover just to start. Again, if it's not hit today, we'll have 750,000 in the guaranteed pool tomorrow on Saturday's card, but I'm using three horses to start things off. I could have even used more. This looks like an anything could happen race to me to start off. Um, I, I thought it was a pretty key scratch of Ventina in race number eight. So I'm using competitive player and hidden to win, who I do like at a little bit of a price. Three horses in race number nine as we move along. And then the 10th race, I do have an opinion there. I love McFly turning back in distance. I think that this is really going to be the good spot for him, but got to use visionary ruler on the drop as well. In the 11th race, 11th race today, Trace Wavels actually looks like the horse to beat, so he's my top pick, but I'm using two Stormy as well. And then three horses as we get down to race number 12, as it looks like some of the strong horses are really drawn towards the outside, so it'll be really interesting to see how that nightcap does play out. And we'll have a stat, speaking of outside horses, for trainer Wesley mm -hmm. Ward's runner in there, who's got post number 12, and that may help the number three the moment is yes. now, who of the main contenders clearly, at least on paper, drew the best as far as post 
Bosco in race number 12 of 12 on this February 9th. But the sequence begins the opening piece of the puzzle with a very, and this will set the tone for the remainder of the card. This rainbow in the late five and late four today are extremely, not that any of them are easy, no. <laughs> exceptionally tough today with some big fields and races that are just really wide open. And uh, off the bat, I'm taking two horses that have inside posts. Mm -hmm. Obviously the Chad factor, I always give a extra consideration when I see uh, Chad Brown's name, especially with a second time starter mm -hmm. who's properly spotted and didn't run all that poorly first time out and it increased the scrutiny, the two. And certainly with the horse debuting for the tag, it's not really something we see much of, of Chad doing, but lately we've seen runners that he'll just drop aggressively. Maybe they'll get claimed and they'll win for fun mm -hmm. too. So certainly um, that horse merits respect. I just took a stab with the four Samara for trainer Tom Abitrani, dropping in class and getting the blinkers on. And she actually uh, ran okay in her first couple of turf races. I hope that that the three races she has with experience, this is a barn, they tend to get better when they have experience. And the fact that they do reach out for Luis Sias, it looks like she might be kind of rounding into herself. And his brainchild, maybe the sneaky wise guy I horse with so. Barkley <laughs> off the trainer change, grabbing Jose Ortiz, yeah. which we saw work a few weeks ago with Ferdinanda. Mm -hmm. uh, brainchild, although she has had her chances at 0 for 8 and 0 for 5 on the turf, she's got a little bit of a, a look to she her today, right? She does, for sure. For sure. It's her first start in Florida, so maybe she'll just like it in the sunny weather. Good. Hopefully she's got her sunscreen and her <laughs> sunglasses today. No windbreakers today at Gulfstream Park. As we move the page and, of course, this show on to race number eight, this is the late pick five opening leg, main track seven eights, older Philly Amer 12 five claimers. I'm a little annoyed at myself as we show you my ticket. I should have included the three hidden to win, who's been more of a synth horse at seven mm -hmm. eights, and I, I stuck with horses that have had okay or prior success at seven on on the dirt, but a very difficult 12-5 claimer to start. I had a single somewhere to mm -hmm. keep the ticket at least, you know, in, in affordable territory. So that's it. Did you take old lace? That's my best bet. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. Well, good. A I lot feel of weight to carry. That but is a lot of I weight, like but you know <laughs> what? That bolsters my confidence. That gold <laughs> lace dropping a mm -hmm. little maker. Jose O, Acacia's yeah. best bet. The drop, I'm in. Sign me up for gold lace in race number nine. Three deep in the 10th race. I have every bit of McFly. I also <laughs> used some money for Ralph Nix and the outside runner in that race and visionary ruler who's danced a lot of dances and that is the drop down derby today it, it feels like everybody almost had the same idea oh there's a 12-5 in the book on Friday let's drop in and lo and behold you've got basically the whole field <laughs> who look well intentioned and well met dropping down right yeah like, what is it uh, great minds think alike type yeah. thing in there <laughs> yeah well just like your best bet in my single today I might there add. we go all right a couple for me in race number Number 11, and someone's going to get through this two lifetime condition. I think, it's, I think it's either going to be Grand Salmon or the number four, our boss, who I uh, think will run well because of her early speed. And then we wrap things up. I just went inside with the Gargan off the claim with Victor Lounge. And the moment is now is coming out of a, a traffic filled trip. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, some good happened to him. And you'll see that race in a few moments. But he did have a tough go of it around a good chunk of the far turn last time out for George Weaver. So the eighth race begins the late pick five. And I see you have the number three hit to win on top and playing around with Formulator, you found a good little nugget here with trainer Mike DePaulo. I did, and this barn has done well, and in general, we've seen those Woodbine shippers be really well meant uh, as they we check out this stat over the mighty Pegasus and those clear <laughs> blue skies. 21% win for a 50% tag drop sprinting. Now you, you kind of uh, start looking at surfaces and a lot of his horses running on the synthetic up at Woodbine. So just looking at horses sprinting with that tag drop, some really, really good numbers and a positive ROI of 242 plus Luis Sias in the saddle. And this horse has now had a couple of starts at Gulfstream, which I really think is key. Now next to her will be the number four, Ms. Maserati, who isn't flashy by any means, but she <laughs> seems to like seven around one yes. turn. She's got that staying, which maybe at this stage of the game, some of the others on dirt going this distance might not have in spades. I think she's got it. And for me, this is just a, a seven eights on the dirt specialty distance type horse mm -hmm. and situation. And I'm going to take the number four, Ms. Maserati, who might be an okay price in the eight. And she definitely benefits from the scratch of Ventina, who was going to show speed as well. Yeah, good point there, no doubt, from post number four. As we move on, to race number nine, ninth race, back to the turf we go at a minus one to 16th, 20 to $16,000 older Philly 
Mare claimers on the card. And let's talk a bit about the seven gold lace <laughs> who, I mean, speaking of drop downs that are running today, it looks like they just want to get the money with her and maybe get her claimed away as she dips in for 20 Gs. And you, you look at this drop, and but this is Mike Maker, and, and he's going to put a horse where the horse can win. Yep. I, I don't think there's any sort of uh, questions as far as the drop is going. She's not winning against the 50, so they're going to slice it basically in half and go down to the 20. Jose Ortiz again, and uh, here's the Mike Maker fan club right here. Yeah, no, and I said, I said, I was a little embarrassed, but I said, Mike, you know, <laughs> president of your fan club right here, and he smiled and kind of just walked away and said, good luck. <laughs> anyway, we'll take the number seven gold lace on top, and I got a kick out of uh, bumping into uh, trainer Ronnie Spatz a few weeks ago on January 14th. Yeah. It was maybe 10, 15 minutes after pulled the goalie, had won for Ronnie off the claim, and lo and behold, Danny Vela said, I want this mare back in my barn, and I had never heard it before, but it, it was it was cute. He said, that was a nice rental, oh, and yeah. I said, that's basically <laughs> what happened. So some extra points that uh, Danny Vela, who again, mm -hmm. another one of these uh, uh, Woodbine Toronto-based uh, outfits through most of the year, but a very, very sharp mm -hmm. trainer as well. And a uh, little pull the goalie. Seven nine for me, you went seven eight nine. I did. I used another Woodbine shipper in uh, Luck B. Tanya, who also gets a drop in class and I think comes out of a pretty strong race. All right, the Woodbine flare there with Sinatar <laughs> teaming up with the number eight Luck B. Tanya and leading jock Luis Saez. As we move on to race number 10, 10th race this afternoon, we'll go on the main track as Friday's marathon program mm -hmm. continues. These are 12 five older claimers and again, I just think everybody had the same idea. <laughs> you normally will get a, a lower level claimer at Gulfstream or anywhere else for that matter, for the most part, maybe except Keeneland or Saratoga. We have a couple of horses who are taking drop downs mm -hmm. in class who just for whatever the reason need the drop and are properly spotted. This race though, just it's a plethora of drop downs and I'll tell you, I'm with you. I think McFly, although I didn't pick him on top and got him second, it's the drop and the three quarters. I think both those things combined for him to really put forth a good effort. I've just been waiting for him to get back to running the three quarters. That just absolutely looks like the best spot for him. He's in today. He gets a needed drop in, drop in class. He's been running against much tougher. But then you've got some speedy horses to the outside in, in Wild Good who really needs a, another one that needed a drop. And Visionary Ruler took money last time and was beaten by that big upset runner in Bordini. So I, I think that this one on the drop again, um, for Jorge Navarro and Emisail Jaramillo. And things haven't worked out this year or even in the last year and change with Visionary Ruler as far as racking up the wins. Mm -hmm. And even though I know he's dropping in for 12500 but I do think it is worth mentioning Jorge Navarro. And if there is a trainer that can get one of these older veterans to mm -hmm. win, even one that maybe isn't as sharp as they once were even 16 months ago, mm -hmm. Navarro's the guy. He's got so many of these horses that yes. have just danced a lot of dances and have a lot of backlash and he just seems to, to be able to maximize what they can do at this stage of the game. And I'll take the nine visionary ruler from the outside post, the old 2992 mm -hmm. box for Acacia and I. Let's move on to race number 11. And as I kind of joked around with you and with that league pick five, one of these older runners and this two <laughs> lifetime claimer will no longer be <laughs> a two pick. lifetime claimer. And that is just <laughs> ridiculous. I looked at this race for a while and said, I, I have no clue here. I said exactly I don't the same have thing. a clue. <laughs> I said exactly <laughs> the same thing. And you look at this race, and the more you start to go through it, the more you can make an argument for a lot of these horses, and then the more you can make an argument against a lot mm -hmm. of these horses. And I think that that's the problem. I ended up landing on the number eight, Trace Wavos, who I thought had the best last out race. That was kind of just what I was going off of. The sprint he ran in at Tampa against Pay Any Price and, and Conquest Enforcer two starts back, no shot in there and didn't run a step. Properly spotted last time, got a 72 buyer speed figure with Jaramillo aboard, who's going to ride him again today. And third off the bench, I said, well, this is the spot. No, the last out effort was good. And if he runs anywhere near that mm -hmm. last out effort, he will likely bury this field. They'll be like, did you get the license plate on that horse? <laughs> yeah, he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. He will just uh, evaporate. He'll be running so fast. They'll just blast off into the future. Now, I took the four R boss uh, for one reason and one reason <laughs> only, and that is the early speed 
<laughs> factor. Swartz is better on the turf, even though she's very inconsistent, mm -hmm. and she's got some really not-so-good-looking effort showing on her resume, but she's got that early speed. I would love to see Apprentice Alvaro Donis just try to gun her to the lead, try to get away from the nine, no dinero early on, who's more of a, uh, a dirt horse and longer, longer sprints, and maybe our boss, maybe just maybe, can get mm -hmm. brave on the front end. It doesn't take a whole lot of imagination to maybe come up with the scenario that who's ever leading once they straighten away off the bend might just be the leader at the finish line. That really could be the case. And certainly with Alvaro Donis aboard, you can imagine that he's going to send this horse. And, and I'm probably remiss not using the one Grand Salmon. And, and he's he's been against tough competition with some outside posts. The turn back in distance, he's got to prove that he can go the five. Exactly. He might be consistently better than just about mm -hmm. everybody in here, including uh, your top pick. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it might be close, but the five eights with him is the tricky part mm -hmm. of the equation because even at this level, it is such a specialized distance and uh, we'll see how he does from that inside <laughs> post, but a good, good, uh, good uh, nugget there from you for sure. As we wrap things up, finally take a breath here. Race number 12. <laughs> These are three-year-old 50K maiden claimers on the turf at a mile and a 16th. Uh, we don't make it easy on anybody here yeah. in the last. I mean, this is about as tough a condition you could possibly get at this time of the year for these three-year-old maiden 50s. And you've got some good trainers in the mix, some top barns, and Erod Ortiz Jr. taking over the controls of the moment is now, mm -hmm. who just seemed like he was pretty uncomfortable yep. last time out. We'll bring you the race from a few weeks ago on January 18th for trainer George Weaver. And although he ran very well, and he's in the, uh, the sky blue there with the yellow, just looked like once he got into the turn and was in between, he just wasn't a happy camper and he wanted to go. Maybe he was a little keen in there and there was just nowhere to go. Johnny's trying to get him to settle down and really had to grab a, a pretty strong hold of the moment is now and just didn't like the spot. He had a steady off heels there. And then he's finally able to get back. There's a little bit of room and he eventually he'll be able to find a seam or so after he's able to angle inside the number nine horse fading and Johnny will basically with the moment is now chase the big even money favorite if we could just freeze it there i mean the big tactical edge went to the number seven congru congruity and here's the seven's price he was even money as johnny with that white uh shadow roll here and the uh, yellow cap i love this telestrator he will chase this horse gainly congruity and finish second best I'm not worried that Johnny is riding for Todd in this race. That's where his <laughs> That's bread <typical>. is buttered. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna take the moment as now here mm -hmm. to uh, to make amends, hopefully with just a smoother, smoother trip today. I, I know that that will definitely be appreciated <laughs> for sure. I mean, that race was was, uh, was kind of a nightmare trip for sure. And it looked like, um, even after he had to check a bit, the moment is now just never looked comfortable. He never got into the bit and got settled. Uh, I took a stab to the outside with the number 12 Lindbergh's kitten, who has never been running for the tag on the turf uh, to the outside for trainer Wesley Ward. And if you look at his turf race at Saratoga, which was probably his best performance, he ran against the likes of Untamed Domain, showed a lot of speed that day and was a really good third. Working on the Palmetto's turf course will show a stat on trainer Wesley Ward. Dirt to turf and maiden claiming just with three-year-olds because he does this a lot with two-year-olds, so I wanted to narrow sure. it down quite a bit. Nice. And some good numbers here. It is a negative ROI. These horses do take some money. Uh, I think that this one with the outside post might be a bit of a price and yes the barn has been a bit cool but I just thought if he runs back to that race mm -hmm. at Saratoga really could be the strongest horse in the field along with the 11 hey Howie mm -hmm. who's got to overcome an outside post and we'll see number two Victor Lounge who's the former Wesley Ward runner is now with trainer Danny Gargan stepping up it is and it's worth noting that number eight cryogenic is back he's the one that did dump a me sale Jaramillo at the wire and he's back with blinkers today. he got a big neon <laughs> yellow highlight Light from me <laughs> saying, boy, the racing gods, they're great, but they can also be very cruel. Very much. But nothing cruel about the next man who's coming on the air with you. That is the one and only Pete Aiello. He'll have those Friday scratches and changes and enjoy it. It'll be a good one today as we settle in for that Mind Your Biscuits return. <laughs> 